They can see you. You are on the internet. They can't hear you, but they can see you. One bowl! Use a bowl and use a spatula! Jiffy corn muffin mix! Uh, is that the back? Does that say something on the back? Something about lard on the back? That it has lard in it and that that's important? Lard is important, that is true, but my lard will be better! So however many people you're making uh, things for, you need that many eggs. Angel is using two eggs because she's making corn cakes for two people. <laughs> Angel is pouring the egg out of, and then picking the shell that she dropped in because she was being a ham and she dropped it in. <laughs> and then we beat those eggs. We beat them! We beat them like we were raised in a different era and had a different understanding of morality. So you're adding just enough of the cornmeal to make a paste from the two eggs that you added. Would you say ratio-wise, Angel, would you say it's like one-to-one, one, or is it just a little bit of cornmeal? One-to-one? All right, what did you add there? Was that liquid? That was liquid. You put something in and you didn't tell me. Oh, it was the cornmeal. Oh, that's pretty key. You would need that. That would be required. That's... I should be able to figure out that you were putting in cornmeal. Mixing. Mixing. Always mixing. The cornmeal must be stirred. The cornmeal must churn. Churn in your heart like a dark coiled snake made of cornmeal. Kind of like the... Well, it'll be a little bit like the poop later from the cornmeal. It'll be... It'll be in the same category, texture-wise, very demon cornmeal snake and cornmeal poop snake. Same family, let's say. Different, you know, family feels different about them. But same family. Okay, we now have it. Okay, it's turned into sort of an ectoplasm, but chunkier. Like, like sort of like if Slimer were made of cottage cheese. I feel like that would be the sort of texture we had right there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sort of like um, mucus about 30 seconds after you pull it out of your face. That's what we're looking for in terms of texture. Yeah. Is that milk? Okay, we're pouring in milk. That was like no milk at all. That was like a thimble of milk. So accidentally spill the milk near the bowl. Uh, just a little bit more milk. Okay, so our texture, I guess our, our final texture isn't supposed to be old Slimer left out in the sun. Oh, pancake batter. We're making pancakes. That's right. Uh, so yeah, you fry them up like a pancake. So this is a way that you could do a little bit of cornbread as an individual serving. Uh, this would be actually something I would totally put do a pan do a pancake stack with these, and then do a little bit of cheese and chili as instead of syrup and butter. You could have something really delicious pretty quickly. Yeah, so Angel is letting us know that if you want it spicy, jalapenos are a great addition. If you want a little sweeter, creamed canned corn can actually be really tasty in these kinds of things. <laughs> Sir Deadluck, would you think that I would say something Angel didn't? That I would misreport her wise ways? Never! Never! Also, Angel just admitted to shooting JFK, which seems like a weird thing to do on a live stream comedy cooking show, but here we are. Yes, okay, we're going to pour it onto the griddle. If you don't have a griddle, you could absolutely do this in a cast iron pan. Uh, you could also do this in any pan, but cast iron would be easier uh, because it holds its heat the same way the griddle does, a little bit more consistently for multiple batches. Cookie, cookie, cookie. This is the part where we watch it cook and Angel does her shuffle dance. Make it cook! It only cook if you dance like a robot, Angel. If you start dancing like a person, it stops cooking. This is a binary cake. <laughs> oh, it'll go. It'll do. So again, if you're if you're if you're living alone, or if you're just not sure if you like uh, cornbread, this might be a great way to experiment with various flavors, various recipes, as a means of figuring out what for you tastes the best. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, it's flipping time. Here we go. Oh, moment of truth. Will it be a pancake or will it still be a pancake but with that weird wrinkly edge where it didn't quite flip right? And then it sort of looks sort of like a wrinkled bed that didn't get made. And then you eat it anyway and nobody knows. Nobody ever has to know. 
Nobody knows our shame. Nobody knows the shame on hand to mouth. Will it explode? Will it explode? It did not explode. It did the opposite. That looks beautiful, Angel. Is it delicious? It's delicious, isn't it? Oh, it is delicious. It is delicious, and I don't have it. I want to have it, and I don't, because Angel has it. And it looks yummy. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Angel. I will talk to you soon. You, will, I hope you're on the Discord hanging out and chit-chatting with folks after your meal. And we will be around all week with uh, the Discord door mom, Miss Angel Askins. So, talk to you folks soon. Love you, Angel. Perfect. All right, I am going to start breaking down this pig fat while Mr. Entity tells us about Canadian chili. So take me through it now. What do you think of as chili? I want to start there because I have suspicions. What I think of as chili that I would go out and buy here has beans and ground beef in it. Beans what and ground I think beef. Of as, yeah, what I think of as quote-unquote traditional chili has hot peppers and chunks of beef like nothing else okay all right you know what um, so far uh your canadian understanding of chili passes my texas understanding uh that is not the northern understanding obviously there are a lot of chilies up north that don't care about peppers at all uh in some places they'll even put in oh, chicken uh or white beans like, you're fine to replace the meat with whatever you want but if you don't have chili how do you have chili con carne I think at a certain point in America, chili started to mean essentially a spiced stew with beans that had something of a Western vibe. Like it really got yeah, very I... watered down. And, and then there was the whole other wing of chili that came with Eastern European settlers uh, that sort of became the chili that we think of as chili dog chili or uh, Skyline chili. Yeah, that's Cincinnati chili, I think that is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I tried to do some reading about chili last night because uh, I wanted to know some history and stuff. And apparently the thing that I think of as traditional chili um, is unheard of in Mexico, basically. They have a different thing. Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Word I forget for, but it starts with a P, and it's basically their form of curry, essentially. So there's no real recipe for it. It's just whatever the shit you throw in a pot. Which is what it should be. Uh, yeah, but then, like, Texas chili is essentially, I guess... Texas, like, farmhands and ranchers and whatnot used to take essentially what it, the chili version of pocket soup, essentially dehydrated chilies and beef, and then they just throw that in a pot on the range. Yep, yep. That's, I mean, that's, that is what I know of as chili coming from Texas. That is what is traditionally described. In Texas, for the yeah. most part, if you have anything other than chilies, beef, and spices, uh, in, you know, uh, onions and garlic, counting as spices, obviously. <laughs> Uh, then you would be considered something of a traitor to the cause. Uh, but I like a bean in my chili, actually. I feel like I do better. You know, I feel better when I have a little bit of bean in yeah. my chili. Beans is good for you, and it, you, you can even take the meat out of a chili at that point and serve it with rice, and you've still got a complete protein. So Yeah, exactly. It's one of the best things you can eat. And <laughs> chili is one, you know, in that it is kind of in... Oh, we lost you, Mr. Andy. Where'd you go? A bag of beans? This thing costs... I lost your video. I lost your video. Where'd you go? Oh, no. Why? Why, Discord? Come back to me, Discord Entity. Not, not do the thing, Discord. <laughs> beans. Boom. In a bag. Beans. What kind of beans are you rocking? Uh, today, I have a mixture of uh, chickpeas and uh, some red kidney beans. Uh, I tend to like to mix at least a couple kinds of beans in with my chili for different textures and flavors. I'm sorry, did you say uh, chickpeas? Are you putting chickpeas in chili? I'm telling Angel on you later. That I, I don't want to hear what she has to say fine. about that. <laughs> that is the other bag of dried beans I had in my cupboard. I love it. Uh, I love it. I'm, I'm going to use the other half of it to try to make falafel uh, in a couple days. So, Ooh, all right. I like that. Now. Well, I, you know, again, yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I, at the end of the day, chili to me is a technique more than any one particular recipe. Uh, but definitely, I would say, go, uh, go into chickpeas. That's a, that's a high level uh, not worrying about the orthodox, let's say. 
Oh, I couldn't give half a crap about the work. Um, to me, the, the, the essential components of chili are hot peppers, cumin, and some kind of meat. Yeah, I think and that's anything right. Anything you want to do outside of that is your own business. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lobby for paprika being sort of uh, generally in there, but I also could make a chili oh. without it. So I've got smoked paprika. Yes, which that's I the right kind. Essential. For the smoky stuff. Yeah, that's exactly uh, it. One thing I used to consider essential, but I can't get here anymore, is um, chipotle peppers in adobo sauce. I really? usually dump a little can of that in. Yeah, I love uh, that. But you can't it, get that? No, it was here in, like, the international aisle for a while, and then within the past, before COVID, but a couple months before COVID, they just stopped having it. And I went on Amazon to try to look for it, and it's like... 30 bucks for a can to get in Canada. Oh, that's nuts. That's crazy sauce. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that, that, uh, if, you, if you are in an area where you can find them, uh, canned adobo peppers are a fairly magical ingredient, especially if you're trying to do anything kind of southwestern. You're going to find uh, it has just a great smokiness that is hard to match. Yeah. So I have dried beans that I soaked overnight with some salt. You definitely want the salt in there. People argue about this a lot, but salt prevents your beans from blowing out because it affects essentially how the hard water most people have messes with the beans. You can also make this with canned beans, but this can of beans costs like a buck fifty. Whereas this bag of beans costs like two bucks on sale. Ring a ding and like ding. Three bucks not on sale. So now so, the big difference being that you have to plan ahead a little bit or have a pressure cooker. Uh, for the dry beans. You don't technically have to soak the beans. You just need to accept that it's going to take a while to cook. Oh, okay. I have soaked these beans. I'm going to drain them off. Um, I'm going to be putting stock in this, which will thicken it up a bit. If you do not want to put stock in it, you could keep this water. There is some starchiness in there that would help thicken. And then I got some ground beef that was on sale. It's a lovely grayish rust color there you go that's the finest that's exactly that's what chili color meat. <laughs> yeah and i'm just gonna stick a little oil in a thingy here you know so i joke around a little bit there up. but on a certain level what kind of jerk would buy a filet mignon and then dice it into chili you know yeah that, that's just not that the only other things you technically need in my opinion to make chili if you have no money, it's chili powder and cumin. You can buy both of these ground. They will make a passable chili. Uh, I'm not using those today because I have slightly better spices in the form of uh, just, you know, whole. Where'd they come from? I know, those, uh, did you get those from a market kind of thing or did you grow them? I did. There is a, an Indian market near me which sells... Yes. Like big ass bags of whole spices that you can't get in the grocery store. Yeah, I love that. I do that all the time. It, it is amazing how how much better you can do with spices and how much more varied you can be uh, once you go that route. Yeah, so I'm just going to toast these off real quick. The other thing I have that I consider a luxury ingredient uh, is just some dried peppers that I imagine if you lived in like... The southern U.S. or Mexico, these would be essentially free. Yes, they are incredibly cheap. Um, you can get those in the grocery store for a dollar for a, a bag the size of your head, if you know the right grocery store. Yeah, they were like uh, two or three bucks for a smallish bag here. But also, if I wanted to buy fresh peppers, they're prohibitively expensive. Oh, so, wow, really? Yeah, That's the only peppers I can get here, the only peppers I can get here at a reasonable price are jalapenos. And very often they'll come in like a giant tray that I do not have any use for. I mean, you can dry them or freeze them, but it's a hassle. You know what we should do? Uh, we should uh, work on making some home chipotle. Uh, if you want to get that smoky pepper feel and the only thing you've got are jalapenos, you know, chipotle, uh, home adobo or ch chipotle sauce, uh, you can do a lot with. Uh, but for now, uh, for yeah, today, I'm, I'm, it's also the case that really at the end of the day, I feel like if you can make something that just tastes good and gets you to eat a lot of beans and some vegetable, uh, then you've won. You know what I mean? Like, like, to my mind, that's what chili needs to be on a functional level. If you're getting too worried about whether you have the right things for chili, you're missing why it's such nah, a powerful choice. Nah, nah. Chili is just some spices. Yeah. <laughs> and then whatever the crap you can put in it. 
Exactly. Um, Whatever you want to taste like chili, now it's chili. Yeah. So I'm going to be using a slightly fancy technique that uses a blender. You could use a mortar and pestle if you've got one. Those things are real cheap. Uh, but basically, because I've got dried chilies, I'm going to toast them off for a minute and then stick them in a the blender. And the real reason you do this is that if you use the chili powder, the main thing that you, you get out of that, I mean, it's tasty and whatever, it will work. But you wind up with kind of a, a grainy sauce. Oh, that makes sense. And Yeah. So I'll be toasting these off, then I'll put my spices in there. That's all going to go in a blender. Um, later on, and this is very important, I learned this to my detriment last time I made chili, do not put tomatoes in when you're cooking the beans. They will not get soft. Oh, really? I didn't know that. The, the, beans keep the, the tomatoes yeah. keep the beans from getting soft? Yes. If you cook beans in an acidic solution, they will just not ever get soft, really. Huh. Put meat in. Because um, I had chili cooking, I don't know, like a month ago, two months ago, for like four hours, which is way too long to cook chili. <laughs> um, and then eventually I just had to seek answers on the internet and I looked it up on a couple places. I think it was the Bean Council of America, which I find very amusing. That's um, awesome. What did the Bean Council have to yeah. say? They said, put some baking soda in it, the alkalinity might help. And it sort of did. It sort of helped. They didn't ever get real soft, though. Huh. I'm just going to brown off this beef here. Man, so something that's going on with this Lord here, I'm going to switch over to my view just for a second because I want to share with people. Oh, yeah, go on. Uh, all right, everybody. So I'm doing, I'm rendering down this Lord, and I'm chopping it down. Here, let me get this set a little bit better. There we go. There we go. So you can see over here, here, I'll pull it away so you can kind of see a little bit better. Uh, this lard is actually very fibrous, and so these things, these things are actually pretty solid. So I have been sawing through, but as you can see, I, there's this, this kind of, uh, let me see if I can, I can show you a better angle on it. Let's see. Do you like my highly technical throwing the camera and hoping it, it, it landed well? Uh, ah, no, 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 no! Sounds like things are going swimmingly. I'm a, I'm a professional streamer. I stream professional. Oh, God. Okay. Uh, so this is actually cutting in an almost cheese-like fashion. Uh, it's got a really interesting texture, uh, but it also has this kind of sticky skin that is making it a little bit tricky. So you'll see this is all cutting pretty easily, and I'm just cutting it down into little pieces. Uh, but as it heats up, it's starting to melt. And as it melts, we're starting to notice that there's some real serious silver skin going on here. And that is tough. That is making it really tough. I'm having to saw through that pretty seriously. But if I try to press through it, I just squish everything out. It, it almost goes like toothpaste. So it really, I do have to kind of saw through. I actually feel like a steak knife is not the worst tool for this, although maybe... Uh, a very sharp regular knife. Okay, a very a sharp regular knife would be better. What do you want from the <laughs> universe? It would be better to have a sharp knife. Anyway, so that's what I'm dealing with while we're learning about chili. I'm just sawing through this fibrous gook over and over and over again uh, so that I can have all this ready to start boiling before too long. Ugh. Anyway, that is the process behind chopping lard. I'm going to do this for about, oh, it's even harder this way. It's, it, look, it, it just goes to mulch. It's mulching. It just, ah, <laughs> uh, I don't want. Oh, I can't see what's going on, but it sounds great. I don't want meat compost. Why is the meat? Okay, I'm going to go back to Mr. Entity and the chili. All right, we're back with you, Mr. Yep. Entity. Whew. Yeah, you'll get a lovely shot of my back as there I peel some parsnips into a bowl. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it because, on this. Uh, I'm gonna keep it on the chop here in the corner. If anybody wants to watch as I struggle through this meat uh, and do my best. <laughs> oh Lord! Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sounds like you're having some fun. 
Oh yeah, oh yeah. Never, never, never a dull moment in the chest kitchen. Uh, it is fun to kind of try these things that I've never done before and I have a reason to do it. I do kind of like that I'm thrown in without a net and I know that I'm going to try to eat this. So there's a certain level of threat to it, you know? Uh, yeah. Like you can't, you can't just blow it like you would in a regular cooking show and then dump it in the trash. And have and someone else come in with a perfectly prepared one. Yeah, exactly. It's just like, I'm going to eat this. I'm going to eat whatever this is. Whatever I've done to myself, I'll know by the uh, end of the day. We're going to call this the compost bin for now. Uh, unlike, I know a lot of your American viewers, I am legally obliged to compost here, so I have to keep that crap separate. I've heard that. Uh, I don't know that I disagree with it, uh, but, you know. Oh, no, it's a great system. I'm from we, America. There, there's... The land of the free and the uncompostable. The, the land of the free and the infected. Ugh. That also. <laughs> so I'm just going to try to take this meat out of here, set it aside, keep most of that fat in there. All Ideally, right. I would have a slotted spoon, but that is not a thing I own. All right, let's do our next... Have some nice day. Our next la that? large slab is on the chopper. Uh, let's check oh. in on uh, the chat, see what people are up to real quickly. See how everybody is. Uh, Angel asks, uh, oh, I'm supposed to freeze it before I cut it. Too late now, Angel. We're in, we're on yeah, the road. Know. You can't pull out. You would have had the, you could have learned that from the, the, the liver. Impossible. I mean, I probably could have. Uh, and actually, I did read that it did make cutting the lard a little bit easier. Uh, most said that you didn't need to unless you were putting it in a food processor. Although after this experience, I feel like I would probably freeze it in the future. The sad yeah, thing is, I it. defrosted it. I defrosted it for this episode. It was <laughs> in the freezer, and I was like, oh, you I'm going to be responsible. I'm going to be a good yeah. boy, and I'm going to get that defrosted so that I, I can be ready for my live stream. And look what happens! Ah! Yeah, so these chilies and various spices now smell like themselves. So I'm going to remove that from the heat. Find my blender carafe. Stick that in here. Chili is an amazing, amazing food if you're not that concerned about what goes into it. Uh... Because even with my fancifications here, this is going to cost like 20 bucks for this entire pot of chili that will feed me forever. Oh, yeah. Chili is uh, affinity food. Yeah. And, you know, the less money I have to spend, the fewer people I have to rob on the way to the grocery store. That's right. That's just good business. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, look at the skin. It's so appetizing. Oops. I just tore that hunk of lard in half. Well, I'll start chopping. So as that beef cooks off, uh, one of the main things that chili doesn't really have is a lot of vegetation. So I'm going to be sticking a few carrots and parsnips in there. I find that works pretty well. I firmly approve. I actually sneak a little bit of kale in my chili these days uh, or other dense greens. Uh, spinach kind of breaks down a little bit too much, but something that oh, like yeah. a mustard green or a... Cor or a uh, uh, especially collard greens, I've found, braised in chili, are really good. It's a great way to make a yes. leftover, actually. Yeah, I don't really uh, change much. It's one of the few things I make that I definitely don't know how to turn into something else. But what I do do with it is portion it and stick it in the freezer, and that's microwave meals for whenever I leave it. Yeah, I think well, chili is also one of those things that basically it's like uh, you make other meals with it by putting it on things uh, to a certain degree. Yeah, so you can make chili dogs. Or, yeah. And also whatever starch you're serving it with will change it up a bit. I'll yeah. be making rice today. You can uh, always do a little bit you, of raw onion and, and cheese on top. You know, you can top it with a couple things. But really at the end of the oh, day. Yeah. Uh, oh, my God. I don't even know if that's going to cut. This <laughs> Lord's, Lord's just melting into butter as I try to cut it. It's just... Turning into soup. That sounds lovely. Meat soup. soup. I'm gonna have to strain out. I'm gonna strain out like a leg of an animal when I do the the crackling part of this. Oh, you're making crackling? Well, you have to. That's how the Lord gets made. You render out the the fat and the little flesh and bits become the cracklings. Oh, okay, so you didn't go get like extra skin. This time. No, 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 not not this time. 
oh, it's so nice to have a, a, like a decent knife and cutting board when I can hear you struggling. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, I'm good at this. So now after you do the, uh, the parsnips and the onions, uh, what else do you have left before you kind of put it all in the pot and just set it to boil? Well, what I'm going to do is once this meat is done, I'm going to uh, brown off this pepper and these peppers and some onion in there, stick all the beans in, stick in the stock, and shove it in the oven because my particular oven sucks and it's easier to keep it at a bare simmer in the oven than it is on the stove top. Uh, so I'll just evacuate this meat in a couple minutes. Uh, that throw sense. all that crap in there, round it off for a bit. Um, oh, sorry, I will be blending the stock with... Oh, right, and since since I'm talking about stock now, while I remember, this is the stock I made, well, some of the stock I made, from that chicken you saw me cook, if you watched that stream. Oh, yes, um, excellent. All right, so we're reusing things so from previous some streams. nice fat on the lid there. I will... There's some fat on the top also. But what you want... If you've made stock correctly, I'm going to put this in a little bowl because I don't want to waste it. Fat is flavor. I don't know if this is chopped or mashed, but I'm going to stop chopping on that piece and move on to another piece. All right. This is what you want from stock. I don't know how well you'll be able to see this on screen, but it's, it's jiggly, like meat jello, that you can trick children into eating. Ooh. Yes, it is. So that means that you used the bones correctly. Now, did, did you do a pressure cooker, or did you just do a very long cook? I, I just left it in this... Uh, I don't own a pressure cooker. It's one thing I would like to get, that or a, uh instant pot, because uh, I also don't own a slow cooker or... I have to admit, as much as I'm anti-consumerist, uh, we got an instant pot for Christmas from a family member because they were on sale on Black Friday kind of thing. Uh, the American yeah. holiday where we beat each other over consumer goods. I uh, so... The most American of holidays. That's right, the most American holiday. I want the TV! Uh, oh, come on, silver skin. Baby, just come off. Just, you don't have to... Ah! Uh, uh, in any case, uh, I find that it is uh, pretty nice because regular pressure cooking is a little bit fiddly uh, and you really do need yeah. to babysit it because there is the possibility of that if it clogs, you could explode your kitchen. Um, well, especially if you don't have a very good pressure cooker. Yeah, ex exactly. So, uh, and with the Instapod, uh, it's a little bit more set it and forget it. Now, uh, I have a regular push pressure cooker as well. Uh, the nice thing about a real pressure cooker is, one, you can can with it, which you cannot do with an Instapod. An Instapod is a glorified slow cooker that has a semi-pressure setting that will help you with cooking food fast. But you're Yeah, not it doesn't going... go as high pressure as a real one. Yeah, exactly. You're not going to be able to, uh, to actually preserve foods with it. Uh, but, that being said, if you want to be able to, say, uh, braise oxtail in an hour or, uh, you know, speed up a lot of things, like do beans uh, in about an hour uh, without any kind of soaking, um, you can really, uh, you can have a lot of uh, time savings with it, which is, is nice. Oh, my Lord, this isn't even cutting. I'm literally just mashing this around the, the strings. I'm going to have some stringy cracklings, is all I'm saying. Stringy cracklings! Lovely! Oh, so, I'm just gonna dice up this onion real quick, then that crap. I do have, oh, better not leave that just straight up fat sitting on the heat. Uh, I do have here a glove that I definitely didn't steal from my job. <laughs> um, I will be using that in place of, like, a, a plastic glove, because here's a major tip I have learned many times to my detriment. Don't chop peppers with your bare hands. Oh, Lord, no. You and will. also, don't rub your face. I, I, I used to... Yeah, and don't go to the bathroom afterwards. Oh. It, it's just... There's... I was refilling this stupid thing with cayenne yesterday, and I brushed a bit of cayenne off the counter, and then, like a fucking idiot, touched my eye, like, two minutes later, and then I couldn't see for about five minutes. Yep, 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 yep. Feels like being maced, because it is. Yeah, that's exactly. What, oh man, I, I worked um, a seismic job out in Calgary for a while, which was essentially I laid cable, uh, and then someone else would come along and blow up a bunch of shit, and the cable would tell them where stuff was in the ground. Oh, okay. Um, but there's bears out there, so <laughs> sometimes they give you bear mace as a um, like protective measure, right? Which is like human mace, 
but worse because it's for bears. Right, right, right. Because they can't sue you. And <laughs> yeah, there was a guy there that someone bet him. I think it was ten dollars. Um, that he wouldn't mace himself in the face with the bear mace. That is not enough. And then money. he spent he spent the next day and a half crying in the shower. It's not enough money. <laughs> Day and no, a half? Uh, Holy it, crap. Yeah, it, it, it's fucking awful stuff. I also once bet, this is a completely different story, at a Halloween party, I kind of dared kind of bet one of my friends that he wouldn't drink an entire bottle of soy sauce, and I offered him a dollar, oh. and he did it, oh. and then almost went to the hospital because, quote, he didn't know there was salt in it. What? Yeah. Did he have, like, a salt problem or something? What was that? Did he have a salt problem? Or just... I no, guess it is a there's just of so sauce. much sodium in there that yeah. it just completely ruins you. Uh, the other thing I will be doing today for my rice is a um, modified risotto method that I learned from Alton Brown, which is the only way I know how to make rice on the stovetop essentially perfectly every time. Interesting. Uh, I'll, I would uh, like to see the example. Uh, I've been doing more stovetop rice. Uh, the, the, the aforementioned Air Instapot also has a rice-making function, so I've got Yeah, that is one thing I want it for. But uh, but I have, since I've been starting hand to mouth I've been trying to do more on the stovetop, just to keep myself honest. Because, uh, you know, it, it's one thing to be like, and then make a pot of rice with your rice maker. Uh -huh. uh, it's a little bit bigger, bigger of an ask if you're having to actually do it by hand. Uh, although yeah, not much, like, it's not that bad. But, you know, it's, it's more intimidating for people, it, I think. It's usually fine, but even on like the, the Good Eats episode about rice, he yeah, says about yeah. yeah, this isn't gonna always work. One out of ten pots is just gonna randomly fuck up. Uh, which is why I usually um, I try to eat a lot more brown rice than straight white rice. Sure. Um, or basmati because it just tastes better. Um, but the way I know how to cook brown rice is in the oven, and it's it's perfect every single time. Oh, that's interesting. I don't think I've ever done brown rice in the oven. Oh. Uh, basically, you get some boiling water, and you pour it into the rice with some water, and then you stick it in the oven for an hour or so. Because yeah. it's brown rice, and it takes a while. That makes sense. One of those because like, uh, the... it's actually just incredibly easy. It's not... Yeah, Reasonable because the oven on. is much more constant heat than especially an electric stovetop. Right. Uh... It's easier to keep the rice at the right temperature and avoid like too much steam or burning the bottom or whatever the shit. So this prep just goes in the pot. I'll quickly break down this pepper. There you go. That middle bit. How goes the lard? It's the pork fat is being chopped slowly but surely. Uh, definitely okay. the steak knife makes it worse. If I had a real knife, I think this would not be that bad. But Oh, probably. You know. Uh, at the same time... I actually have a... Uh, I have a video I can link you later of a Canadian guy I watched making words. Yeah, it's... Uh, uh, a series where he broke down an entire pig. Oh, wow. Yikes. Yeah, that's a little bit higher than I'm going to do right now. Uh, lard itself is enough of a challenge for a Sunday afternoon. Uh, we'll have to wait until I have the farm for butchery. You'll get that cabin in the woods one day. That's right. And it definitely won't turn anything out like the movie. No, no, it, it's going to go It'll great. It's going to go real good. It'll yeah. It'll be no problem. Everyone will be, be like, first. I'm so glad that happened. Oh. So this is, I guess, more of a, like, sprito or something than it is uh, a traditional mirepoix or whatever. Or maybe it's a trinity. I don't really recall. It's one of those things that you stick in stuff that makes it taste good, and they all have special mirrors, even though they're all... Right, it's all kind of, yeah, it's, uh, it's at the mirepoix or the holy... Yeah, they're, they're a little different, but they'll much. Uh, uh, trinity, I believe, is bell pepper. Carrot and yeah, onion. and that, that's what I'm doing now. Mirepoix carrot, is carrot, celery, onion, I believe. Yep, yeah. uh. but uh, celery is an annoying food for me because I'll buy it occasionally to make you know. The only thing I really use it as an ingredient straight up is um, 
of chicken noodle soup. Everything else, I'll just like cut a few stalks and then freeze the rest of it for another mirepoix down the line. Yeah, it's got a very classic kind of autumnal feel. It's great in uh, poultry, classic poultry dishes and that kind of thing. It's a good aromatic. Uh, but it's not one I usually think of as, as much as I, maybe as, as I should. You know, it's a nice one for a little snack. But... Yeah, it's, uh, it's nice enough. I think part of the reason I don't like it that much, or I, I don't think of it that much, I'm fine with it, but my dad doesn't like it. Uh, uh, so I didn't eat it a lot growing up. Okay, now it is time to don the glove. Because I'm not an idiot. Well, I am an idiot, but not today. Uh, and then we'll just break these down real quick. Thank you, everybody in the stream. Uh, let me take a look. Uh... <laughs> oh, kitchen shears. That's a good call, Sir Deadlock. That would work a lot faster here. I actually have those, too. But again, that's not the game. Yeah, you're not allowed. You shouldn't even be using that wooden spoon that was in the picture. You should have one of those paint stirring sticks from the hardware store. You know what? You know what? It's not a bad point. You saw, I felt like because it's just a crappy wooden thing that I've had for 10 years, I'd get away with it. Uh, but I debated. I debated in my head. And then I said, you know what? It's boiling fat. Don't use the short spoon. <laughs> yeah, probably want to keep as far away from that as possible. <laughs> One of the benefits of these gloves that I definitely didn't steal from my job is that they are actually cut resistant, so I can be slightly more dangerous with what I'm doing. Here. Oh, that's sweet. Holy Lord. So the first thing I'm learning is that breaking down this pig fat is much more physical, physically taxing than maybe I would have assumed. Uh, this, is, this takes some work. This takes some serious work. Now, at the same time, I'm about to have so much lard. Like... This is an, a fairly ridiculous amount of fat for me to have on hand in my home. I think this is the kind of thing usually you do when you're homesteading. But, then again, I won't have to buy lard for like a year. Lard keeps. Lard keeps essentially forever if you're making it out of leaf fat. Yep. Which is why it's a little weird that apparently in America you were saying earlier that the level of lard you can buy is just whatever the shit pieces of fat, and then they put hydrogenated stuff in there? Yeah, so I'm not sure exactly the chain on this. Uh, from what I've read from a couple sources, but, you know, it's always one of those things where people kind of enjoy saying, aha, all food is evil. And I, never, I'm not, I always yeah. want to be a little careful. Um, but the, the, uh, the tale that I was told was that back in the 50s, Basically, when they started trying to figure out ways to market hydrogenated vegetable oils, one thing they did mm -hmm. was market it as a is like it was clean. It was pure and white and clean. And so lard, which up to that point had been not like yellow yellow, although you can get very yellow lard, lard if you you know look around, um, but was not perfectly white, right? Uh, and so, th and had like, you know, whatever, had biological inconsistencies that companies hate. So, lard ended up, in order to compete, having to sort of hydrogenate as well to be the crisp white lit look that the vegetable oil right. achieved. Uh, because it worked, because people bought it, basically. That makes sense. Uh, one thing I do know about the U.S. in terms of um, fats and history is that when margarine came on the market there, uh, there was a huge lobby and then they weren't allowed to have it be like yellowy or white anymore. They had to have it be blue because the milk people. Yeah, blue margarine for a long time in the States huh. because of the milk lobby. Right. Ah, so that's basically all of my prep work done. This is just gonna go in the laundry later. Um, pretty much. All right, so... I guess there's the... You soaked the beans, there's you toasted the peppers, you ground them up. Yeah, I'll be doing that in a minute with the stock. Right, you've got your stock going. What else did, what else did I miss? Uh, you did your, your blend of uh, veggies. Yeah, I got my sofrito or trinity or whatever the fuck you want to call it. Uh, it's just... Doing its thing in some of that beef fat. Um, 
when that is deemed to be softened, I will put the beans in there, put the stock stuff in there, throw in a couple of umami bombs, which I guess I haven't talked about. Um, I will be putting in Marmite. I will be putting in, I should probably not show you the label sides of these. Correct. Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> uh, soy sauce. Uh, I will pull an anchovy out of the freezer, and it will not taste anything like fish, but it does add some depth. A classic little Caesar bit of salad, dark chocolate. Uh, Caesar salad strategy, classic. Yes. Uh, basically, everything I have that tastes of umami will go in there in little bits, and because they're all different, like, I could just throw in a bunch of MSG. I do have it around, but chili is a thing that really benefits from depth and flavor. Yes, and that's does. all going to add their own little background notes to stuff. That sounds uh, mighty fun. Well, I can quickly show you my rice strategy uh, before you switch off to Angel or yourself, and I basically stick everything in the oven. Okay, no. Um, so how it works is you take two cups of rice that I measured it somewhere. Oh, if anybody needs to buy cheap-ass Tupperware... Uh, these things, pint containers and like quart containers that restaurants use, they're like 25 to 50 cents a piece and they work perfectly. Yeah, those but are great. What I'm going to do. Yeah, I also drink out of them a lot. Uh, where's my butter? So you take some butter, you put it directly in the capsaicin laced cutting board uh, for future flavors some very surprising toast down the line. <laughs> Mr. Slippy says, Marmite and chili, I'm shocked. And I am too, by the way. That is quite the, uh, the, the dalliance away from our typical chili construction. Oh, it's just, it's just for umami. It will not taste like Marmite in any way. Oh, I know, I know. Uh, let's see here. Same with the soy sauce. You could put fish sauce in there if I had any around, but I have to go to an Asian market to get more. Uh... Same with the anchovy. You're not going to taste anchovy. It's just like something that adds umami in the background, and you're never going to notice. But if you take it, it's like a bay leaf. You don't notice what it does until you take it away. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to toss in some butter here. We will let that pot. So this is ostensibly what you're supposed to do when you start making risotto. You take some butter, you get it all bubblified and whatnot, and then you pour some rice in, two cups in this case, and you stir that shit around a lot. Although, and then you put some salt in, and then you go over here and you turn on your kettle, which, I mean, if you don't have one, you're like five bucks, and otherwise you can just use a pot. <laughs> and then you just kind of brown this off, and it will give it uh, some nutty flavor. Um, and then once the water is boiled, there will be some fireworks, essentially, when you pour the boiling water into the very hot fat. Uh, and then you close it up and you leave it for 20 minutes and you get perfect rice. With some extra flavor. Ah! Drop my camera, sorry. <laughs> but the only other thing I'll give... Might want to come back to me at the very end to see the uh, final composition of the chili where I add the tomatoes and whatnot. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But aside, aside from this that I'm doing now, the only thing I'm going to do in the meantime is chop some garlic that I forgot to chop. And um, what was the other thing? All right, approximately 20 minutes before I pull the chili out of the, the beans out of the oven, I will toss in those carrots and parsnips so they don't overcook. So I just shove them in now. Uh, and that's basically it. That's my chili. Beautiful. Season, which will be like some acid and cider vinegar, probably. I had some liquid smoke that I bought, but it's the most chemically. Yeah, get, liquid thing smoke I've is ever. gnarly. Liquid smoke is like unless you unless you have to for some reason, it's rarely a good choice. Yeah, I've heard that if you buy like really really good stuff. It's, it's excellent, but uh, don't ever buy cheap stuff. Yeah, no. It's just some horrible factory-made crap that tastes of chemicals and vaguely smoke. 
Well, I mean, that's, it, that's what it is. To be fair, it's burned plastic that they flavored the right way. Pretty much. Where is your, uh, uh, you know, thanks? Yeah, so I'll be using smoked paprika instead, which has pretty much more natural to it. Beautiful. I love smoked paprika. This is one of my favorite ways to get some smokiness into something. Yeah, I also uh, read about liquid smoke that if you ever buy, like, applewood smoked bacon or whatever, and you don't know the precise origins of it, they're probably just lacing it with liquid smoke. So, that water comes up to the boil. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chop a little bit more pork while you're letting the water come to a boil. Let me know how yep. it's going. Whew. Basically, you just stir this a bunch. Uh, I can smell some nutty flavors coming out because you're, you're browning the rice, essentially, which is a thing you don't normally do. But if you're just using, like, plain white rice, I find this brings a lot of flavor to the party. Uh, normally, I would use brown or basmati, as I said, but uh, pandemic restrictions and whatnot have uh, led me to buy different things. That's right. Well, there's nothing, I mean, you know, white rice is a little bit boring, but there's nothing fundamentally horrible about it. Uh, you get a little yeah, more nutrition fun. from brown rice, for sure, but you can counterbalance that with what you put on the rice, too. Yeah, but also, if you eat a ton of rice, like if you're of, you know, Asian descent or something, and rice is part of basically every meal you eat, probably don't eat brown rice. There's way more arsenic and stuff in it than white rice. That's true. And there that can some, become unhealthy. Uh, yeah, you can. You can uh, oh, brown rice does have some things. Although, there are some ways to reduce some of that, especially soaking for extended periods of times, and in fact, fermenting brown rice before cooking can reduce a lot of that unwanted uh, oh, element. I've never heard of fermenting yeah, what? a little bit like sourdough. You do it by you soak yeah. your your brown rice, and then you take uh, a certain amount of that soak liquid, and you always hold it back, basically, and that becomes your your fermenting liquid for brown rice before you cook it. Makes sense. The one thing I know about rice is that uh, if you leave it on the counter in some like little bit of water or whatever, it is the worst smelling and fastest Ooh. rotting thing I've ever seen. Yeah, it can get pretty rough. It's it's rank. Oh, looking forward to that cornbread thing now, because that's the thing we definitely don't have in Canada. Huh. Like you can't even buy pre made stuff where I live. Really? Probably in like Toronto or Vancouver or Montreal, the three good cities. <laughs> But I not mean, in my tiny ass province. There are 150 thousand people in my entire province. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I grew up in a there's small like town in eight, South Texas, so we have a little bit of a similar vibe. Just kind of yeah related to too there's, many people. I live in the uh, biggest and almost onlyest city. There is another city, but it's only technically a city because they changed the rules for what you had to have to be a city. Um, and made it much easier to do. Well, I live in the biggest city, and there are approximately 80,000 people here and the environs, and I said that to a British friend of mine, and he said, yeah, that's what we call a village. <laughs> yeah. Okay, my water is bubbling. I'm going to go grab that. And then we get the fancy, bubbly, Definitely always pour boiling water into your plastic containers. It's not bad for you in any way. Super safe, super safe. No chemical yep. uh, absorption. Yeah, whatsoever. no estrogenic chemicals in there at all. Right. It's not going to ruin your sperm count or anything. So that's bubbling like a fucking madman. Uh, because it's full of hot fat. Okay, all right, okay, okay, all right. So Hold on. you quickly do that, and then you slap the lid on it, and you leave it for 20 minutes on low. And it's rice. That's a much more dramatic way of making rice than I'm used to, but I like it. Uh, yeah, there, there, there's some danger involved. I look forward to seeing the result. All right, Mr. Energy, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to go over to Angel. Let me know Perfect. when it's time to check in and see some progress. Absolutely. Talk to you soon. 
Where's my beans? There's my beans. Come to the internet, you are beans. live! You are on! You are here! So, here's that rice. Uh, clearly, perfect little granules of deliciousness. Beautiful, and that was the rice that you almost created a grease fire in the making of? Yeah, that, that's the method. All you right, just, um, keep a fire extinguisher handy, <laughs> and if you have to put that in there, that's just extra flavor. Boom! Oh no, oh no! Every day is hibachi. Oh no, my oven mitts are in the other room. One second. I should mention, actually, uh, while Mr. HD is grabbing his things, if you are watching right now and would like to be a guest on a future live stream, uh, please come on over to the Discord and send me a note. Uh, we are trying to involve the T-Sab and Ultra T-Sab as much as we can. So I'm thrilled to have people of the community come and show me what they do. Now I can't uh, see. Please send a note. Come on over. Okay, what do you got going here? Okay, I got a pot chili I just pulled out of the thing. And by chili, I mean, it's hard to make air quotes with other than Um <laughs> It's kind of like making Muppet, Muppet really. mouths. Womp womp. Yeah. So, uh, I've got a couple things to add to this. Number one is a can of, in this case, diced tomatoes, but really use whatever you want. The main thing to note about that is use, A, don't put them in early, or I explained that earlier. Don't put them in early. I explained that earlier because the acidity will prevent your beans from softening. Uh, and B, probably don't use tomatoes from the grocery store because they suck. Because they're designed to um, oh, they're travel always well. Terrible. They're always, they, they, it's yeah. like apples. They're just one of those produce that has become so ubiquitous that how it looks on the shelf matters more than how good it is. Yes, exactly. There, there's, a, I believe, a Good Eats episode where he explains this by putting like a standard beefsteak tomato in like one of those vices the clamps that you use for woodworking and stuff and he just squeezes it and squeezes it and squeezes it and it doesn't do anything because that's what they're designed to do they're designed not to react to the the rigors of travel right. designed to travel well look nice which they which achieve are mostly often, by... yeah there are often the biggest uh enemies of flavor right there right yeah right so, we need it to be shelf stable and to look good under plastic for up to nine weeks what delicious food yeah. do you have? I have nothing that's delicious. What are you, I've got some plastic I sprayed with perfume. Perfect. That, that's essentially what orange juice is. It's just or, orange juice that they took all the flavor and oxygen out of and then literally paid perfumers to design perfume to yes. make it taste like orange again. But it is technically orange juice because at the beginning of that process and the end of that process, it was orangey. <laughs> yeah, technically it's made from oranges and is all natural and blah 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 but all that means is it was originally orange yep. uh, i also have a uh a beer here we took this we orange and we burned today. it into its essential carbon then taking that carbon we rebuilt it into an orange juice natural orange juice they can rebuild it they have the technology <laughs> Ooh, that's good so, bionic orange juice are, could actually do well these days there are Alcohol-soluble flavors in foods, especially tomatoes. So if you're making anything tomato-based, put some wine, put some beer, put something in it. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, you know, I, I definitely know, you know, I've often put wine and beer and alcohol in tomato dishes. It's definitely something I've tried. I didn't realize that that was because there were actually things that were dissolvable by the alcohol. I always just thought wine tastes good in this and would dump it in. Well, know? that's one thing. With, with wine especially, you're also adding acidity and fruitiness. Um, with beer, in this case, I'm adding like a, like a, this is like a, to quote Alton Brown, middle of the road ale. Right. Um, so it's just kind of a little earthy, a little yeasty, a little beery, but the alcohol in there will bring out some of the alcohol flavors, alcohol soluble flavors. There, there's, there's essentially three kinds of flavors in food. There's fat soluble, water soluble, and, uh, alcohol soluble uh, in terms of what we actually bother to get out of it. Um, so anytime you can add all those three things into a thing, you're going to get a tastier food. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, I really, I appreciate that. That is not something I've thought about with alcohol before. But I mean, I think about it with fats. I do that with fats. I, I awaken the essential oils in various uh, herbs and spices when I'm cooking with them. 
Uh, so, I mean, it makes total sense. Oh, look at this. Yeah. Oh. And now we move on to the ingredient I probably hate the most in the kitchen, which is just this tiny ass can of tomato paste that even though it's fucking small as hell, I'm going to use less than half of. Uh, and then this is probably going to get frozen or sit in my fridge until it goes back. That is, that's why you got to make a chili and then you got to, you got to pivot, make yourself a pasta sauce that you freeze too. And now you're pantry yeah. bacon. But yeah, no, it's true with those tomato, those little things of tomato paste. I have got had so many of those go bad because I make one dish and forget I have a half open thing in the back of the fridge. Yeah, in that like exactly. the, the the no man's land behind the eggs. Yeah, and uh, because I can't cook this, egg, it's gonna have a tinny flavor, which is a thing that happens with tomato paste. Which is why if you watch recipes online, they'll always tell you to like try to cook it out. But uh, I couldn't put it in at the start, so I can't cook it out. So the way to counteract that is usually. Just a little sugar. Oh, that makes uh, sense. I would, I would say also, now that the beans are flour. Tender, here's, here's a tip. Don't confuse flour and sugar. It, uh, it doesn't work the same. So I would also assume, now that the beans are tender, could you presumably just cook it longer and cook that tin flavor out over time? Oh, yeah. Also, the alcohol. Right. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm on a stream. Usually, I'd probably let this go another hour if I wasn't trying to Yeah, present. absolutely. Because like, once the beans are tender, then the adding the tomato doesn't do anything. And chili is one of those things that gets better every day, in part because you bring it back up to temperature and everything recombines. The other thing I'm going to do, and this is, you don't need this gadget. This is a micro grater. Um, I'm just lazy. Uh, I have a lot of garlic here, and I'm just going to grate that straight into there. Because totally it's easier than rinsing. Nothing wrong with chopping big chunks in a chili either if you uh, are so inclined. Uh, and obviously there's always the smashing technique with garlic, which if you have a lot and you don't yeah. have any tools, you could probably get a fair way away uh, just by bashing the crap out of the garlic with the butt of uh, you know, a spoon or a fork uh, or yeah, a wooden or spoon. Not a knife because you'll cut your hand open. Uh, but, you know, so, so or as I was anything. saying in the, uh, the YouTube chats there, uh, a tool that's really cheap but often really overlooked these days is a mortar and pestle. That is true. That is a, a fundamental tool. If you have one, you uh, should be using it. I, I tend I not to assume, but it is a great one to have for just about everything. And then you can make pesto. Oh, did we freeze? Mr. Entity, we froze. One second. Did I freeze? Oh. Hello, am I back? It's a lost call. Oh, one second. I think. Oh, wait. Maybe not. Nope. Yep. Yep. It happened again. My internet in the southeastern United States is not the best, and sometimes it breaks. So if you're on live stream, it will sometimes glitch out, and you'll just have to hang out with me. But hopefully this will fix. If not, I'll be reconnecting shortly. Oh, here we go. It's the internet. Oh, am I back? Am I back? Am I back? Am I back, everybody? Oh, we're back. We're back. One second. I have to. I have to get Mr. Entity back. There's Mr. Entity. I I glitched out, but I'm back, so I might have missed some stuff. One second. All right. I just went onto the Discord and said uh, your thing's broken, and came back and said it's broken. All right. Cool. One second. Bop 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 bop. That it? No. Okay. Is that it now? Yes, there. We're back, Internet. Sorry for that hiccup. I live in Hi. the beautiful southeastern United States where everything is always super, super great when it comes to infrastructure. Uh, so we may have hiccups like this on stream occasionally, but I appreciate people who stick around. And if you don't, well, you should just check out the highlight video next week, baby. See what you missed. I and we're back. Get You're on the so how's it going That's with that? That's a terrible show? joke. I re I immediately reject that joke. <laughs> I re never reject a joke. 
They're all gold in their special ways. Oh, this is weird. Oh, there's some garlic in there. This pig flesh is turning into Cheetos. That should be a marketing slogan for them. <laughs> this pig flesh is Cheetos. Pig flesh, it's like Cheetos, but more screaming. Or less screaming, depending. Depends how much is made out of actual jaguars and leopards. <laughs> All right, so I've got some chili now, basically. I will check this. Oh, three leaf. That should come out. You can eat those. Let us see how this person is doing. I presume it's done. Oh, it's hot. Did you know that if things are in the oven for like an hour, they turn out hot? You know, I've heard rumors to that effect. Yeah, it turns out they're true. I might have to do some sort of scientific inquiry into that. Ah! Cook. Oh, this is so weird. Ooh. It's so weird to watch pork rinds form like, like an algae. An algae <laughs> of pork. Exactly what you want. Is that not appetizing? <laughs> I'm not sure I've mastered my food show lingo yet. Does uh, an algae of pork not make one's mouth water? Uh, it kind of clams it up what, with all the gooeyness. <laughs> I will try to present this as best I can in the, like, two steps. Where is the ladle? I need you. A shitty ladle. That'll do. I really hate this ladle, and that's why I threw it on the floor. That definitely wasn't, uh, you know, basic physical incompetence. You can yeah. save money by growing your own chili. I'm actually going to be doing some gardening here at some point. I've not figured out. I wish I had the outside. Yeah, I just happen to be, you know, it, it, it's very weird. One thing about being broke is that it really, really depends where you are as to what it feels like and what your options are, you know? I, I've been, I have lived in walk-in closets for months at a time in which I was lucky that I got a space in the mini fridge to have yogurt and carrots. Uh, and I have been in situations like this where I am paying actually less than I paid for that walk-in closet to live in a house uh, where I am now that has a backyard. And so because I have a backyard, I figure I might as well garden because it would be silly not to when you have the option. Oh, I forgot to add acid. Well, I'll add some to the pot later, but for right now, here's a little bit of just cider vinegar in with the chili, a little splitchy food. Always vinegar. Work. Yes. Uh, there's plenty of fat in there, so I don't need to sprinkle anything on the top. But I also have some cilantro, which was on sale, and Beautiful. also my favorite chili uh, herb. So you're not a soap person. Be... No, I do not have the gene that uh, makes me taste it like soap. No, neither do I. I love cilantro, but I, it's one that I try to stay. You know, I, I, if somebody else tells me they don't like cilantro, like, if somebody says they don't like garlic, I don't believe them. But if they say they don't like cilantro, yeah, I'll that's listen. just nonsense. <laughs> That person just doesn't like food. Yeah, that's a lie. They're lying to you. Yeah, but if it's cilantro, there's a legitimate physical genealogical reason for it. And it, that there is a gene that uh, people might not know about it. But if you have a certain mutation on it, cilantro just tastes like soap. Whoa, just, okay, hold on. I just, okay, I'm going to take a picture actually with the, you check out the highlight video. I'm going to have some uh, food porn inserts. I just want to get a cut of what it looks like in this pot because right now it's really kind of going from the loose gelatinous flesh into this crunchy pork rind sort of in, instantaneously before my eyes. Am I allowed to masturbate to this food porn? I'm not allowed, you know what, as a content creator on YouTube, I'm not allowed to ask what people do with the content I create. That's probably good for a lot of the ASMR people. It's, it's in the terms of service. If you're doing ASMR and you think people are doing anything other than masturbating to you, I don't know what to tell you. I just don't know I what to I actually say. read an article by the, the person who made the Goblins webcomic. And before then, I didn't know what ASMR was. It, it stands for 
auto sensory and meridian response or something. Yes. But well, basically, it's not what it, like you assume it's sexual. Obviously, that's the first go-to assumption. But apparently, it's not. It's just some people have it and some people don't. It's the thing your body does where you get like tinglys on your back and your head. That is absolutely the case. A hundred percent the case. And the people who get those tinglys masturbate while listening to ASMR. That's all I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not saying that there isn't masturbation involved, just that there's like a Venn diagram involved. <laughs> but you might be wasting your time with it if you're not getting the extra tinglys. Uh, but... Yes. <laughs> Are you done with your food porn thing? Because I've got some food porn. Yes, I'm done. Let's see your food porn. Okay. Uh, the rest of this cilantro is going to be a salad in a little while, or going to go into a salad most of it, but, uh, there's my chip. Whoa! Look at that! That's gorgeous! I love the pairing yeah, of the rice and the and the, the chili and the, the half of the bowl. That really makes it, like, feel special. Yeah, that was uh, approximately three seconds of me thinking, how can I make this look good? Guys? Yeah, there you go. That's all ah, you need sometimes. Well, I'll give it a little tasty. It's a little thin right now because it's real hot, but, um, hot. Oh, hot. Oh, hot. Careful, careful. Oh, no. <laughs> ha. Oh, beautiful. All flavor is pain. All flavor is bought through pain. Oh, beer is, as usual, my savior. <laughs> Thank you, beer. Well, yeah, it's good. Well, that looks amazing. Well done. I, I gotta say, I, I really, I, I, it looks very appetizing. Um, my Texas ancestors are writhing in their grave and horrified by the fact that I'm going to praise a Canadian for a chili that includes Marmite, anchovies, parsnips, and beans. <laughs> but that looks really also good. Chickpeas. I would eat that. And chickpeas! And chickpeas! I would totally eat that, though. That looks delicious. And really, at the end of the day, for me, because I don't, I'm not struggling to find new ways to eat meat, uh, the best thing about chili is that it can make beans and other kind of root vegetables into something that's very unctuous and rib-sticking. So this is the kind of chili that I'm actually really all about, uh, in that it's going to stick with you, and it's so cheap if you bulk it out with beans and other vegetables. Yeah, this, um, here's my giant fucking pot of it. Uh, that's less than $20. Boom! And that's like, that is enough that you have to start... And that's without the rice. Yeah, and you have to, that's the point in which you have to start freezing, or you're just not going to eat it all. So you've, that is, yeah. uh, yep. that is food bank level food right there. Let me see if I can, how does my freezer look today? Yeah, you can see here, chili that I made on 420, and it, Definitely not going to get me high when I eat it. Be very careful with that chili. Be very careful, Mr. Entity. Yeah, that looks like a warning. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> you know, if you label your food and stuff, that, that's just a microwave meal that you'll eat. Yeah, and actually that is another great thing, something we're going to talk about is organization of your leftovers. Because one of the biggest things that happens for me, I know, I don't know if this is true for you too, Mr. Entity, I'll get home, I'm tired, I just want something good because I want to be comforted and I want food and I'm hungry. Uh, and it becomes very easy to say, I'm just going to go get something from a dollar menu. Or I'm like, this will be the day of the week where I go and eat out or something because I'm too tired. Whereas if you have something in your fridge that's already organized and laid out and you're just like, or I could spend 15 seconds and be eating in 15 seconds, then you've beaten lazy you. You've in done an in run on the lazy yeah. shithead version of yourself that's going to make the actual decision. So I think that's real. I think it's great to label. I think it's great to organize and just kind of have a system, which you, you've been doing really well in. You do that with your shopping too, right? I try to. I mean, I'm not perfect at it, but uh, I, I attempt to do that. One problem I have is I do live by myself, so a lot of the stuff I make is just a lot of one thing. Yeah, um, no, I, I, I struggled with that for a long, long time, and man... Uh, I did two things. One, I just turned this off because I think I was getting really close to the scorch point, so I'm just going to stir this and let it go. But I can see a lot of steam coming up off of this. I'm hoping it's all just steam and I haven't uh, gone too far with my lard. It's definitely gotten kind of golden rosy. So this may be more of a bean lard than a pie lard, except that I still say that uh, pork apple pie sounds good, so I'm not that worried. 
Um, but yeah, I've yes. been saying bacon pie since the start of the stream. I gotta say, like, right? Like, like, how bad? How bad could that really be? At the end of the day, what have I lost? I oh mean, no! At worst, you're British. Yes, it's like, oh no, oh no! I'm going to be eating eating beans that taste like bacon for a long time. That is the horror that I have opened for myself if I overcook this. Ooh. <laughs> Uh, well, Mr. Entity, uh, if people don't know, Mr. Entity is a live streamer uh, that does a lot of uh, charity streams as well as other live streams. Uh, we featured the bad video game fiction uh, during uh, the charity live stream that I believe you are still doing. Is that correct? You're doing that the that rest of the month. That is still going. Yeah. I am so. doing that at least until the end of the month, yes. Maybe not today. I was going to today, but then I decided, you know what's the best dish to make in the middle of... <laughs> 75 degree humidity, 75 percent humidity, and 27 uh, non-freedom unit degree heat. <laughs> Chili in an oven with all the spices. I'm in a super and, similar uh, position I, right now with this giant pot of uh, like yeah. milk and fat. Uh, I'm so hot, I don't feel like doing anything. But Wednesday and Sunday, from here on out, I will be continuing them. Excellent. So, um, uh, for people that are watching highlight streams or uh, clips later in the future, for future people. Uh, check the description below. We're going to link Mr. Entity's live stream and anything else that he says is appropriate, uh, as we will for anybody who comes and joins us, obviously. But uh, Mr. Entity has actually been a really huge uh, contributor here during the Kickstarter, and I really, really appreciate it, by the way. Uh, you can't see my face, so you don't know that I'm being genuine right now, but I really appreciate all your help. Uh, and I love that we did a version of Chili that is not, uh, uh, I'm going to say normal, but that's not the word I mean. Um, uh, it, it's a chili method. It's not really a recipe. So exactly, much. and that's what I love because that's the point, right? It's the method that's the point because you do not have control it's over what is on sale. Tastes like chip. Yeah, you don't have control over what's on sale. You don't have control over what's going to be cheap for you that week. But if you know techniques, you can take things and make them palatable because you know how to make things like it or in the neighborhood thereof. So yeah, I, I actually slightly lucked out this week because ground beef did wind up on sale medium ground beef, which apparently in Canada means upwards of 23% fat and nothing else specific. But I was also going to try to, I, I have some chicken in the freezer. I was just going to shred up and toss in there. I also have some tofu in the fridge. Uh, tofu is like, chili is possibly the best application for it that isn't curry. Because oh, yeah. you really want something highly flavored to make sure that the tofu isn't just the worst thing in the world. Yeah, I think so. And it's also one of those things, you know, I think people have, there are Americans that are very reluctant about tofu in these kinds of dishes because they ate the 1970s California vegetarian attempt at making things vegetarian through shoving tofu where it doesn't mm. belong. Uh, but, yep. you know, I think that, that putting tofu in chili is actually really taking a page from people that use chili all the time, which is braising it almost, you know, like what is Mapo tofu, but a very flavorful broth with a bit of meat in it that you braise tofu in. So I, I think that there's a yeah. lot going for it there in terms of infusing it with flavor. You can also, uh, TVP is another great vegetarian option for chili. Br chili is one of those things that was designed for rotting meat. So pretty much anything with a meat texture is going to do okay in a chili. Yeah, and it's so flavorful, it barely matters what you put in there unless you're using large chunks of animal, which... I don't think most people do, unless you're like a real Texas traditionalist. Yeah, you gotta get, you, you're, you're getting pretty, like, let me put it this way. If you are at the point where you are purchasing entire briskets or primals of whatever to make your chili, I invite you to a new food channel called Rich Jerk. Rich Jerk, for all the rich jerks buying primal cuts of beef for chili. Yeah, <laughs> I also invite you to my house. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then it's come cool. over, come over and share. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta spread that love wrap. All right, Mr. Entity. Well, I'm gonna let you go. I'm gonna stir this, and I'm gonna do the, uh, I think it's actually ready for this to be filtered uh, or strained out. So I should have a result on my lard, and then we should be done with this live stream. But yes, please, people, take a look. Keep an eye out for Mr. Entity. And if you are here right now, go over to the Discord. Uh, we're also going to be doing some stuff with Chasen's live stream. I'm going to have more about that this week as well. So keep an eye out. We're going to be doing a lot with live stream information and whatnot. Mr. Entity, thank you very, very, very much. And we will be talking soon. I'm, I hope to have you soon. Have you back soon. Yeah, perfect. Happy right. to come back anytime you want me. Amazing. Enjoy that chili. I will. Thank you. Very well. Canadian.
I got the last word.